All right, so we are about to play our first game of District Commander Caracas. Maracas. Um, that, and I just realized that it's not Caracas. No, it's not Caracas. Um, uh, what is the fictional name of the place? Uh, Virtual. It's, 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 it's the fictional city of Maracas in the fictional city of Virtualia. Okay. Uh, so this is a counterinsurgency game by Brian Train. We like Brian Train. We want to try this. So uh, jo uh, Jacob has uh, read the rules. I don't know anything about the game. I feel like that's a good way to kind of figure out uh, how the game works. Um, I will, we'll, we're gonna do a rolling start, no yeah. rules explanation, and uh, see how it goes. I'll do a bare minimum of what you need to know to make the opening decisions. Okay. And we're doing a super basic game, so no intel phase, no assets, just the bare bones. And then we'll figure out anything else we might like. Correct. So, um, so to start, what's going to happen is first I and then you are going to buy the units we want to start the game with. Okay. Um, units come in three types. There's militia. Any unbought militia are still available to be accrued, recruited later. There are upgraded militia, which for me is police, and for you is guerrillas, which is this box right here. Okay. Um, you can buy them at the start. Any ones that you don't buy are only available by upgrading militia units. And then you have big army units. Any that you don't buy at the start of the game will only enter the game through requesting re reinforcements from the high command. You will have no control over it. So... You want to buy probably most of your big army units. And by buy, you're giving your opponent victory points for every chit that you start with. Um, All right. So, for example, militias, for each militia you take, your opponent, uh, start on the board, your opponent gets one point. For every upgraded militia, your opponent gets two points. And for every big army unit, your opponent gets three points. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be playing the insurgents, and you're going to be playing the government. Yes. So to start, and, and this is right now we're at zero VP because we haven't gotten any of things yet. Correct. Also, if you notice, the big military units are not all created equal. You don't get to choose which one. You have to draw them randomly. So I'm going to take. So looking at the random uh, setup, it has me starting with no less than four big army units, and in it, forty percent of the time, it has me starting with all eight big army units at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to take seven of the eight at random. So that's three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21 victory points that you get for that. Okay, so I, which one, this one? No, the this VP, one? yeah. Okay. Um, then I'm going to take, so the, the random for militia has me anywhere from four to eight. I think I'm going to take six militia, three, four, five, six. So that's six victory points for you for the militia. So you get six more on top of the 21. Um, and then upgraded militia. Um, it has me start from three to five. I think I'm just going to take three of those. So you get six more points. So for you, if you want to know what the random setup is, mm -hmm. um, the militia, it gives you anywhere from 6 to 10, 40% um, chance of 6. For upgraded militia, it is in 4, 6, or 8. Two fours, two sixes, and an 8. Um, All right, just pick a good setup for me. So, so I don't know. I would say if you want to go in the mid-range of each, you buy two of your th two or three big army units. You buy... This is my big army right yes. here? Yes. Yeah, there's only four. So, like, buying three would leave right. one available as a reinforcement. Okay. Um, you would buy six upgraded militia units. So, this is this is stuff that I have now. Yes, so we're, we're going to place on the board once we're, we're done buying. Board. Okay, so this is my three big uh, uh, army. Yep. Um, six of the, mil of the upgraded militia. militia. Your okay. guerrillas, which are so upgraded six. militia. Yep. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's, sorry, three, six, nine points for your big army, and then six times two is twelve. Um, 
for the militia and then for, or for the guerrillas and then militia it has six to ten militia so uh, that's these guys these guys um so anywhere from six to ten i get one point each fine i'll just do eight okay so eight more. So that puts us starting, I'm starting at 29, you're starting at 30. So only right. you have one point advantage on the buy. Okay. Um, so now we're going to put them out. I put out all my units, you put out all yours. When you are putting out your units, you may also include all of your dummy units. All of your units come out face down. That's why your upgrades aren't on the back side of your militia, so they can all be face down. Okay. Um, when putting them out, you can put them out stacked. You can put them out individually. You can, oh... Crap. Sorry, there's one other thing we need to buy. Um, I will buy it after I finish setting these out. When setting out military units, put them out singly. You can put them out in stacks. Um, when activating groups, you activate a stack. So having stacks is stronger, but it means you have, you know, you're in fewer places because your things are stacked up. I should also note that a white bar means the unit is not allowed to take certain associated actions with it unless it's in a stack with a unit without a white bar. So just having stacks of only white bar units is potentially bad because they're limited in what they can do. Um, your dummies, if they get turned face up, just disappear. They're not real things. They're just imaginary things. But that's, you know, you're the insurgent. Um, okay. The other, th so I let me put my stuff out and then you can put yours Also, militia don't move. So whatever space you put them in, they are stuck in that area of the map. Okay, so how do I want to divide this up? We're gonna do, yeah, all right, so. Okay, the other thing we can buy, and this is the thing I forgot, um, we can buy the infrastructure units. I uh, mean, what the game term for is. Um, inf yeah, infrastructure. Um, the cost in infrastructure is the number <coughs> of population of the area. So, a population three region, I would give up three or give you three victory points for each infrastructure I want to place in it. Mm -hmm. um, infrastructure majority is how you score the region during scoring so you know it's more expensive to put them in areas where they're worth more um so to start out also there is a limit on the number of infrastructure that can go into an area um that limit is the population <coughs> of the area um and the pop is listed on the thing what, yeah. are, the, what are the red things up there so the red things are are special objectives essentially it's worth victory points for you to attack them mm -hmm. so i'm allowed to assign one stack to defending it and you must eliminate that stack before you're allowed to attack the objective um to score your bonus points um if i don't put anything on it it still requires you to take an action to attack it but it seems like i want to start there to just not give you free points 
Um, and I put a big army unit in each of those stacks because reasons. Um, um, so, and it's per player. So in a pop two region, each of us could have two infrastructure units in it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you... Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, no, let's do it like this. Yeah, go. All right. Um, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do two, five, seven. So I'm going to give you eight victory points for putting a five, a two, and a one. Yep. So you're 38. Um, now you you put out your units and do the same as far as buying those. Now, where would so I want to For you, um, placing units is, when you're placing units, they either go in the normal area or the underground. Mm -hmm. Units in the underground, I can't fuck with, ex or I can't mess with, no. except... <laughs> Except to pull them, do a patrol to try and pull them out of the underground. Mm -hmm. Pulling them out of the underground, they stay face down. I have to patrol a stack not in the underground to flip it face up. I'm not allowed to attack underground units. I like I can't do anything to them, pretty much. It's like uh, uh, in regular coin games, the cylinders face down. But they can only do three specific actions. Okay. So they are very limited in what they can do as well. Um, they can build infrastructure and recruit militia, which like are the two big things you'll do with them, but they can't tear down my infrastructure. They can't ambush. They can't attack. They can't do a lot of things other than that, basically. Okay. Um, yeah. stuff in the underground also can't move. So be aware of that. They're not mobile. Um, but once I've pulled them out of the underground, then they be, they behave normally. Also be aware that units in the underground don't count against me for control. So by putting them in there, they are safe, but they don't stop me from like dominating and scoring a region or anything that requires, like if all of your units are in the underground, they're not in my way. They're safe, but they're not in my way. Okay. Um, ultimately... You're going to score a region in two ways, by having the most infrastructure units in the region, the most, mm -hmm. time means no one gets points, and by being the only player with military units in the region um, equal to or greater than its population. Um, note, your underground units don't count for that, because okay. they don't yeah. count for scoring. Um, They're the Bene Gesserit. Yep. Um, big army units, my big army units have a dispersed side. They're weaker, but they count double for scoring based on having military units greater than population. Hmm. So this would count as two units towards the three I need, but its military went from a four to a three. Okay. That seems still objectively better, but I guess we'll find out. Um. The stats on the units, by the way, the dot number is how easy, how good it is at either staying hidden when I'm trying to pull it out or finding you when you're hidden. The middle number is its combat strength, and the bottom number is its political strength, how good it is at recruiting militia, building infrastructure, tearing down infrastructure, how good it is it for you to bully my militia when they're your, because you have the ability to bully my militia units. My big army don't care. Um, okay, so yeah. we're, so I should put these together. Yes. And then I should put, if I put them in, uh, the underground, they're protected. Correct, um, but they won't do anything for right. me for scoring, um, other than build infrastructure. Um, so you could go to areas I'm not, with the idea that you're going to spend money building infrastructure there to score. And also um, high pop areas. High pop areas can be worth more points. You won't know until we randomly get our scoring card, which is not until after we have put everything on the board. Okay. So you don't actually get to know what is valuable till after you've made these decisions. Just understand high pop areas may only be worth one point. 
They may be worth their population in points, or they may be worth the number of infrastructure you have in the region in points. All right, so um, I just need one non-white thing, right? Right, for the stack to be able to function fully. Okay. So I guess I'll put... And so going, and they all go face down. I don't get to see which you. Don't forget, you have your mix them up with your dummies. So I don't know, like you can add right. dummies into stacks with guys, so that way it looks bigger than it really is. You can just have dummy stacks. You don't have to use all the dummies that you don't want, but it seems like you should because mm -hmm. it just gives you a bigger presence than you really have. All right, so. I guess I'll do that. I'm going to stand over here since normally all of your chits are hidden and so you can stack them up without me seeing. I'll just What's the benefit to starting underground in a, in a region where you're not in? Um, you can build infrastructure and if I move my units over to you, like, I'd be move, spending money to move to you to then have to spend money to try and patrol you out of it. If the only thing you're going to be doing is building infrastructure and recruiting militia, there's no reason for them to be above ground. They can do that underground, and underground they're safe. All right, and infrastructure is points, so... Yeah, I'll do that. So I should probably have something in every underground region? Potentially. Um, it depends on how much it spreads you out, because you, you those stats matter. Like, mm -hmm. things are not automatically successful. Oftentimes, you will be drawing a random chit to oppose, and those chit values go up to five. So, if you have a guy with a one, if, you know, the chit drawn against him is a four, you know, he's probably not going to do much. Also, if they're underground, they get to stay face down when doing their things. Pretty much every action you do while not underground will flip you face up, even if it's just like building infrastructure or stuff. So being underground keeps you face down where I don't know what is actually in the stack. Note that you're not allowed to activate dummy stacks to do stuff. If there's only dummy chits, you can't... Um, you can't use it to build infrastructure and do things like that, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know what either. I just did, but like, I guess we'll figure it out. Correct. Um, so the next thing that happens. We, I put us at our TP max, so our money each turn starts at 15. Um, and let's get to the start. So the first thing that happens is we are going to randomly draw one of our uh, strategy cards. This is what the high command up above us has decided our priorities are and will determine how we score victory points. To show you what it looks like before that way you can read the card without having to reveal what it is. Um, here this is a better one. So this says for each non uh, paramilitary unit that's non big army um, that I killed dear while I have that as my scoring card I would get one point. For each big army unit killed, I'd get one point disrupted. Um, for each enemy infrastructure I destroy, I get four points. Um, the criminal NSM we're not using. Population control victory points. PN means it's the population number. So if I control an area by having the most infrastructure, I get its full population and points. Um, the re LOC control, which is having the most military units, mm -hmm. uh, being the only player with military units equal to or greater than population, is only one. So military control is weaker on that card. If I cause terror in an area, I will lose po points equal to its population value, and I get zero um, points for a no-attack mission. 
Okay. Um, so that's yours, and then well, I'm just I'm, pulling. Like, yeah, I'm pulling to see what like, are what my victory conditions. Right. And uh, do you know this what can, this is? No. So I'm. Okay. I just showed that card. I'm going to randomly shuffle, take one. You're going to randomly shuffle and take okay. one. Um, so this is mine. This is mine. These can change. Okay. One of the things when you ask for reinforcements from high command, they may give you a new um, and change your scoring like in the middle of the game. All right. So this is mine. And this is mine. Okay. All right. So next thing that happens after... Um, so that's just part of the initial setup. Mm -hmm. So now to start the phase, the first thing we're going to have is a random event. To determine a random event, you're going to draw two chits at random. Give me the top number of the first one and then the top number of the second one. And it's the tens and the ones. Okay, so the top number of the first one is four. Okay. Top number of the second one is two. All right, emergency budget bill. The government gets two... Um, Tactical points, dollars, basically, from emergency spending appropriations. So, we st our money starts on the max. I get two extra dollars for this turn. So, this is your actual money. This is where your money will go to at the start right, of the so turn. So, this is my money now. Yes, and which I have... Sets it, you set it to I your max. max. Okay. Um, I set mine to max, and then I got two from the event. Okay. Um, so, we received our allotment. Um, now we're going to receive chits, chits, so what's going to happen is we're each going to randomly draw a chit. You find the highest number, so my highest number is four, so I will get four random chits to add to my hand to go with the zero chit. And during actions, I can use one of the chits in a given action to buff the relevant stat Okay. for the check. So I got my four, so I have a, I have my, every, we always have a zero, so you can always play the zero. And that's this, the this bluff. one that we have. Right. right, and when you play it, once the action's done, you put it back in your hand. You never not have it, and I have my four random, you don't get to see what they are, but I get to see. So now you draw one out, whatever the biggest number on it is. Okay, five. You get, then you put that back, shuffle, and get five random chips. In addition to the zero. Okay. Okay. So we have our chip allotment. Um, now, if we had any dead units, disrupted units, we could pay one dollar each to make them available to use again. Okay. Since we don't have any disrupted, we're going to skip that. Um, now it's the deployment phase, so I go first. Um, so I am allowed to take any of my non-militia units off the map plus any available units that I have, and then redeploy them anywhere I want. Once again, militia, once they're on the map, never move. So that's the thing to be aware of. Um, we, I already did my initial setup. Um, you'll have the same opportunity I have as soon as I'm done. So after seeing what you have on the board, I can mess things around, but then you'll get to mess things in a second. Um, and it's free to redeploy. There's no cost inherent to any of this. Um, I'm going to leave things as they are. Like, I don't know enough to screw with things. I had an initial deployment. I'm done. Okay. So now you deploy next. You may first move any and all of your combat units, not militia, uh, from the available section to the unit box, um, to any areas on the map. Um, all counters deploy. Which is this, but any. Right. Because they're on the board. Mm -hmm. It'll happen once they die or if sure. we get reinforcements yeah. at some point. Um, um, you just have restrictions where your new things can come onto the map if they're not already, like, and having guys there. So gorillas, the upgraded, basically when you're putting new stuff onto the map, they either have to go to infrastructure. If you don't have infrastructure, then they go to, did you buy any infrastructure? No. Did you want to buy any infrastructure? Um, yes. Uh, so you give me victory points equal to the population for each infrastructure you put out. So if, if that's the case mm -hmm. and if, how much, so infrastructure is the pop plus yeah. the infrastructure. 
So the cost of the infrastructure, I get points equal to the population of wherever you plop it down. Yeah. And then what do I get? You get, during scoring at the end of the round, turn, if you have more infrastructure than me, right. you will score whatever your card right. says you score. You don't get to look at the card when making that decision. This is technically drawn after you buy infrastructure onto the board. Okay, so I'm just going to not have any infrastructure then. Okay. Then you'll be using actions to build infrastructure is what you'll want to do. Um, okay. Um, infrastructure never moves, which makes sense. We then skip the intelligence section segment, which I that's a that's the number one thing I think we would end up playing with after playing and then going over how it works. Um, so operations phase, you so as the insurgent player, you get to pick which area to resolve first. Each area will only resolve once, um, but every area with units will have to be resolved at some point. But you get to choose the order that they resolve in. Okay. When we resolve an area, whoever has the most money is the active player. They take actions until they have are no longer have the most money. If we're tied for money, you're the active player. If the active player passes, it then becomes the other player's turn. If we both pass, that area is done and not to be gone back to in the same turn. Um, the different things you can do. I have the most money, so I will get to take the first action in whichever area we want to start with. Which if it's an area you're the only person in, you'll be doing actions. Each action costs a dollar. Okay, or an, an action, or a, what is it? Operation. An op a, a, a operation point. Yeah, a tactical point. E a each tactical operation point. Yes. costs a tactical point. Okay. Um, the tactical operations, these are ones you cannot do while underground, are patrol, which is me only. It's how I pull you out of the underground or flip you face up. Mm -hmm. um, attack, either one of us does. It's just a straight military attack. Um, no, militia by themselves can't attack, um, on either side. Ambush, that's only your, your, I'm not allowed to ambush, only you are. Ambush allows you to use one of your stacks to attack one of my chits in a stack by itself. Um, you also don't suffer additional, like, there's no chance of you suffering overkill if I win the fight. Like, there's no penalty to it. Mm -hmm. The restriction is you're only allowed to ambush each of my stacks once. No matter how many different army groups you have in an area, you can only ambush a stack once per turn. Okay. Um, move, which is move to an adjacent area. If you move into an area that hasn't been activated, once it activates later, you get to activate that stack again. If you move into an area that's already been activated, it's done moving and it's done doing anything. Um, you can do any number of move, attack, patrol, ambush. Like, the same stack can do any number of those repeatedly until you decide to stop spending money and or they move out of the area. Um, Non-tactical missions, the ones I'm going to go over next, a stack can only do once, and if it does one of those, it can't do anything else for the whole turn. It spends its whole turn just doing the one thing. Non-tactical missions are build infrastructure, uh, destroy enemy infrastructure, recruit or upgrade militia, um, and you have a spe you have a special one that's intimidate, which is used against my militia and upgraded militia, but it won't affect my big army units. And then there's um, remove terror because terror prevents scoring from anybody. It's bad for terror is bad for everybody. Okay. Um, in this scenario, you also have a special. There's two special actions There's that are whole turn actions. Your special one is sabotage, and my special one is repair to remove the sabotage. Um, yeah, so it's cause sabotage and repair sabotage are the two special. Um, my special move thing, if I had a stack in the QRF box as a move action, I can move that stack to the active region. It basically lets me like reserve military units. Okay. And then bring them where I need them. But. Okay, let's uh, let's move forward. Because, uh, so, which region do you want to resolve first? Um, so if I resolve a region with um, only me in it, I get to do action. You do stuff until you're done doing stuff. Okay. Um, and uh, is there, does the rulebook have like a list of actions to go over that I can do? Or is um, there like player? 
There is a, oh, a player aid. Um, so here you go. All right. So if I were, let's just let's just choose. Mm -hmm. uh, let's choose this. Okay. So, what I choose Since to resolve it's underground. That action, right. It can only do non-tactical missions, yes. and it is not allowed to reduce enemy infrastructure or intimidate. Okay. So it can only do three things, which is build infrastructure, build or upgrade militia, or remove terror. All right. I will build infrastructure. Okay. So, to build infrastructure, um, the area must not be terrorized. The infrastructure unit must be available. So there has to be some, and we are peace limited on these. Mm -hmm. um, player will um, player will indicate the given stack. Expend you so you spend a task point. You indicate which stack is spending its turn building the infrastructure, which is just the one. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to look at them and add up the hearts, the bottom number on all chits in the stack. Um, Which is four. Okay. Um, so, let's see here. If it learns, if they were not underground, they'd all have to flip face up. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to compare. So you have a four. Um, let's see here. You're going to draw a random chip, and you need to beat. You need your total to be bigger than the heart value of what is on the chip. Okay, so it's four. All right, then you get nothing. Okay, and then does this that go goes, back? Yep. Goes back. Um, Excellent work, people. Yep. No, you did not get to play one of these when building infrastructure to buff the action. Okay. Um. That is that. Um, yeah, if lower or a tie, no effect. So if we've, you're, you can't do anything else in that so region. This is basically like my hand, right? Here. Yes. You use them to buff single actions by the relative value of the thing. All right. Um, but that build infrastructure does not allow you to buff the action. You just have to have valuable enough guys to do it. So which region? And it says you can use markers or something to, like, here's... We've done that one. Okay. Which region do you want to do next? Uh, let's do... Let's just do that. Right. What action do you want to do? Build infrastructure? Oh, wait. You need an infrastructure to recruit or promote militia. Both of us do. Mm -hmm. So build infrastructure would be the thing you're doing there. Yeah. I'm going to build infrastructure. All right. So you add up your hearts. Um, you draw a chit. You need the chit to be let... The chit. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. So two hearts and I drew one heart. Boom. You get to put an infrastructure Excellent. chip in the area. So in the area just like that? Yep. Okay, and that cool. cost you a point or okay. a tactical point. And um, how do I get tackle? You will be set back to 15 with next turn. Okay. Unless you go, you can go deficit. Mm -hmm. If you go past zero, you switch to the deficit side and start deficit spending. Okay. That will reduce your reset value at the end of the turn. If you have right. depth. So I need to look at what I score here. So what does disrupted mean? Disrupted is killed, basically. Okay. Destroyed. Uh, and it's... So if it says something disrupted and in one, that means I get a point for everything yes. that I kill? For that type of thing, yeah. Okay. And population control is controlling that region? So that's having more infrastructure than your opponent. Okay. If it's a number, you just get that flat number regardless right. of population. If it, is, if it shows a U, IU, that means you get points equal to the number of infrastructure you have built in the region. If it shows a PN, you get points equal right. to the population value. And uh, uh, the lock control is if you're the only one there. Lock control is if you're the only player with more active military units than populate, the equal to or greater than the population. Okay. Which will not be you, it'll be me where I have that. Because underground doesn't count. Mm -hmm. um. All right, so um, that was that. Do I choose again? Yeah, you choose every time. Mm -hmm. And we need to go through all the regions. So if you just want to do all your one shots first, cool. go for it. Let's do that. So I have uh, three hearts over here. And nope. Mm -hmm. I have 
Well, that's uh, yeah, that's the, let's do this. Um, so if I have a thing that has only dummies in it, am I basically when I do that section, I'm letting you're just you passing, know, but I'm letting you know that those are dummies. Or that you don't want to spend a dollar on it. Like, you look at it... If oh, you, you have can one... say that you don't want to do it. Okay. Right. Yeah, and I actually had to spend for that. Right. But yeah, you could pay... Like, you could look at it and see, oh, I only put one heart there. I'm not going to pay a dollar to guaranteed fail. Like, screw that. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, because, but, yeah, I'm spending the TP anyway. Well, yeah, you're not spending the TP unless you actually do an action. Like, okay. you would not spend there. You would not yeah, spend there. Yeah, but when you, you do the action... Right, you're going to spend. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what. Um, what so. is the range of hearts? You, um, on units? Yeah. I oh, On this, uh, one to five. One to five and... I don't know the relative. I don't know what the distribution is. I just know the range is one to five. So right, if, I'm not going to do an action on that one. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm going to do this one. Mm -hmm. I need to beat a four. Now be aware... Before or I need to, you don't know. have active military, which means I can just kill that and get the whatever my victory point value for destroying your infrastructure if I succeed in the operation. Well, let's just do it to see what okay. happens. Sure. So, uh, this was a five heart, I had four hearts, so no. bupkis. So, what happens then? So, now, so you spent the dollar for doing that action, yes. Actually, sorry, when we activated this, mm -hmm. um, we're supposed to do this, you don't actually go first, okay. I go first because I have more money, sure. Um, so I would look at my stack. I only have two hearts, which is mm -hmm. pretty abysmal, but I don't really have anything else effective to do there. And I got extra money this turn that I don't get to save. So I'm going to spend, oh, I could try and patrol. I've got three. What do I think the odds of me pulling you out of the underground with a three are? Um... Really good question. Um, I'm gonna try it just to try it. Sure. So it's, they're going to attempt to patrol to Kill expose my dude. the cell. Um, it's not even really exposing you; it's just pulling you out of the underground and bringing you out into the open. Mm -hmm. um, You're sweeping. Yes, I'm sweeping, but it's a half sweep because you don't go face up. So I spend a dollar to and declare that this stack is going after this. If you have different stacks, I can only target one. Okay. Um. So, I spent the dollar. Um, we're both going to get to play one of our hand chits on mm -hmm. this. There's no reason to not play the zero, even if you don't want to play anything, because you at least want to have something in there. Okay. And what, that, just bu that just buffs what I have already. Right. And so how this is going to work, my total is going to be the, cir the total circle value of everything in the stack, which is three, mm -hmm. plus the circle value. And I can look at my you stack. You can look at your stack, yeah. yes. Um, plus the circle value on the chit I commit, which my chit will be face down. You don't get to see what it is till we both commit it. Um, that's my total. So it'll be three plus the chit. That's all I get. You get, um, uh, the lowest number. So you look at the circle numbers on your different chits, mm -hmm. whatever the smallest number is, you get that plus the terrain modifier of two. Okay. Um, so if your lowest number is a two, you would get a two plus two is four, plus the value of the chit. What's the value of the chit? The the hand chit you, oh, you the, committed. Yeah. Um, and that's also the circle number. Yes. All right. So it's the lowest so, and, circle and number. And yours is known. Yeah. You know it's three plus a number from one to five, from zero to five. Okay. And then I, I, don't to, know I just have to beat that. You just have to tie it. I, I have to it. beat your total. Okay. I know you have a plus two, so that means unless your lowest number is a one, you have an edge in doing it. Um, uh, and if I play one of my things, they go away? Yes. The zero goes back to your so hand. I, don't have, I only have four things um, over the course of the game? or This turn. This turn. At the end of this turn, any unused ones go away, and then we're going to draw a new set to complement your zero next turn. Okay. Um, so I'm putting this in. Okay. I'm going to put in, uh, 
and uh, what do I lose? Do I lose everything? Or no, you're just sweeping. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, all yeah. the. You're right, you're if right, I win, right. that just moves out into the open area, but stays face down. Got it, got it. That's the only consequence here. Um, all right, so that's what I'm going to commit. Okay. And then we flip. So my total is three. No, you don't flip yours face up. Uh, okay. You just, just flip your chip and then give me your total. So uh, that is four six. All right. So, and actually, you might not even have to tell me what your total is because it's revealing information. Um, yeah. So sorry. Technically, you don't even have to tell me what your number is. You just say whether you're higher or not. Okay. Which you do flip this, right? Then you, my total is three. Is your total better than that? My total is better than that, obviously, because right. I have four right. on the board. So this goes away. This goes back to my hand. There is no negative. So you, it goes back to your hand if you lose. The zero always comes back to oh, your you hand. Oh, you played a zero. I Sorry. played a zero. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so I just spent a dollar to pull mm -hmm. a chit out of your hand. Cool. Um, and I can keep doing that because it is a tactical action. You can do any number of tactical actions. As long as I want to keep paying for them, I am allowed to keep doing it. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is, what is my, my military rating is five. And I'd still have to flip you face up. Man, it takes a lot of work to get you out. Um, Counterinsurgency is a tough business. It is a tough business. Um, oh, and we already did this one. And this one just so we can see where what Jerry's are doing. Um screw it, I'm gonna keep going. So I'm gonna pay I'm going to attempt to patrol again. Um and I'm allowed to do it any number of times with any number of stacks against the same one of your stacks or different stacks. Okay. I can work have my die guys work the boat. So I have three plus a chit, you have two, plus your unseen low number, plus a chit. Um, spend that money. I spent the dollar. I've spent two dollars so far, one for each. I just want you to spend that money. Yeah. Um, I got that. Um, and you're just continuing to do this until you Until decide I decide I want to be done. to stop spending money. Yes, correct. Or decide to stop making me waste things. Correct. Um, but that's why you have the zero. If you think I'm just playing yeah, yeah, my yeah. zero again, you just play your zero, and then I spent the dollar and got literally did nothing. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I'm so, doing this. All right, I'm going to do this. All right, so I'm going to reveal three. My total is six. Is six uh, better than your total? You have uh, you have defeated me. Boom. Your guys have now been exposed. You get that back. This three, four, four, which is a really nice one, went away. Mm -hmm. So now, because I still have more money than you, I'm mm -hmm. still the active player. I will attempt to patrol again. This will flip your stack face up if successful. Okay. Um, so, and it is literally the exact same procedure because it is the exact same action. Um, And the uh, drawback to me being flipped over is then you can kill me. All d correct. All dummy chits will be revealed. Actually, so technically, um, and I should have thought about this before doing it, but we'll resolve this action anyway. Um, I don't need you to be face up to attack you. I just don't get to know what your military strength is unless mm -hmm. you're face up. Um, This is essentially a block war game with chits. Yeah. I guess so. I, I haven't really paid, played any other than the one block war game, so I do not have the experience on that. Did we? And you only played like a couple turns of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jacob played. Uh, we we did a kind of like a learning couple rounds, kind of like we're doing right now with Triumph for Tragedy. I ended up playing it. Four or five times, but I don't think you ever played. And mm -hmm. yeah, so we have Julius Caesar there. Mm -hmm. You want to try that sometime? Uh, but um, okay, I 
Oh, no. Sorry. I'm not allowed to attack a stack unless the least one chit is face up. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. So, I've committed a chit my th and three plus that mystical mm -hmm. chit. You have so two. So, you can attack until you uh, successfully swept me. Yes. So it's like sweeping, but it requires yeah. two actions. You have yeah. to remove me from the underground, and then you have to flip right. me face over. Um... Zero. Yeah. Nice. All right. I will pay another dollar and attempt to sweep you I was again. Gonna, I was I was I was gonna put the zero. <laughs> um. All right. Let me. And the thing is, the more I do here, the less resources I have for every other area I want to do stuff in. Yeah. That's why I'm um, not super upset about you spending all your money. Yeah. Um. Okay. I guess since these are the only guys in here, I can make it easy for you to see. Um, they've got a total combat value of five. They have a intelligence value of three, and their hearts and minds value is two. So they're pretty awful at doing the infrastructure thing and or removing terror or any of that other stuff. And those mostly... Uh, so the non-circle things matter for chit pulls. Yeah, like or like so the star things are combat. So once you're face up, if I'm when I'm attacking you, yeah. my star value is five, I'll get to see what yours is once you're face up. And then just whichever one's better. Right. Plus the chit that gets added. Uh does uh terrain benefit for me in that? In yes. combat, I believe so. Let me see here. So on an attack, um gives you choose the stack you're attacking with, you choose the stack you're attacking, you pay a dollar. Um your yeah, attack is here. TRS plus assets plus chit. Versus TRs plus assets plus chit plus terrain. All right, so yeah, the defender does get the terrain modifier. Okay. Um, the bigger number suffers hits. So I'll go over like the so damage. Your star one number is five. five. Yeah. And then I should look at my star number yeah. to see if I right because uh, I may or may not uh, score points from killing your units so right. maybe i want to get into uh, right like you may have a bigger star fight. value and then you look at it and go yeah i'm okay. totally fine with fighting you or i may not be attacking yeah, you things that i probably should have yeah. uh no, that's no, with no, rolling that's start time. like yeah no that's fine that's fine all right so we reveal zero. zero zero all right i didn't bluff you out another one nope um all right okay so i'm going to Um, both sides take damage in an attack, by the way, if that matters for your, uh, so what is the, uh, what so is the damage? How damage is calculated. After you have the total, you figure out the winner based on the grand total number. Then for damage, the loser takes a number of hits equal to the difference between the totals of the troop of the star value used. Mm -hmm. So even if the loser has a higher base star value, it doesn't matter. You just figure out the higher, bigger star minus the lower star. The difference is the number of damage the loser takes. Okay. The difference between the... Um, The chits played is how much damage the winner takes. So, like, if you play a five-star chit from your hand and I play a two-star, the winner would take three damage regardless of whether it's you or me that won. Okay. Um, and so, then how much to kill the unit? So, non-big army units, one hit kills them. Mm -hmm. Big army units take hits. So, e militia. Right. Militia or guerrillas, guerrillas. or police. Okay. One hit destroys. Right. Big military units can take a number of hits equal. It takes a number of hits equal to their military value. So you would need four hits to kill that. All right. So these are... One hit and it's dead. Um, and these are militia and guerrillas. Yeah. And then these are the, 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 the your, your, right. your, your big units. Right. Yeah. And actual military. Actual military. And then yeah. what were the other units? That's so it's it? mi militia. Uh-huh. 
Uh, oh, the, so yeah, yeah. The, the white bands are right. okay. militia. So these are like police and these are military yes. in a coin game. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. Um, and so that's the thing. So this would take four hits to kill. Um, that's what these numbers, like this tracking two hits. at the During the um, beginning of turn when we're buying dead right. units, you so can it pay is, to repair it. Is essentially a block war game. If, if it was a block, then it would just like you would move it right. to signify damage. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, the cost to repair unit is $1 to heal it to full, mm -hmm. regardless of how much damage it's okay. taking. Works just like blocks. Cool. I mean, this should be a block war game, but I know Hollander Shield doesn't, doesn't have the capability to make block war games. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, is it back to me? It is... Oh, I'm deciding if I want to try and flip you over again. Mm -hmm. I will pass. Okay. You now have the opportunity to take an action with your stack. If you don't... Uh, an action yeah. with that stack, this but stack I had already done it. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Right. So... Yeah, this region is done. Um, choose a new region for us to resolve. Uh, is there any other region that I'm only in? No. No. There's a region uh, I'm only in. Yeah. If you care. Like, you want me to spend those dollars before going to... Sure, yeah, spend those. Three. Spend those uh, TPs. Yep. So I have three hearts here. So here's the trick here. If I take... Any op with the guys protecting the objective, they move off of the objective. You have no units in there, which means them moving off the objective doesn't matter because you won't have an opportunity to attack it this turn. And I can reposition them on it between turns. Um, so because you don't have any guys there and it's active now. So that's a, if you wanted to activate something else to like move in there, but your guys are underground so they can't move. So unless I pull them out of underground, you can't. So it's fine. Um, okay, so I'm going to page a dollar so I paid a dollar I'm going to attempt to build a infrastructure in the Centrico here I have a total heart value of three so I just need to get I need to get a two or a one I got a four so that was unsuccessful all right that region is done where do you want to go next Sure. All right, I will activate this region. Okay. I still have one more dollar than you, so I do the first thing. You have the tactical initiative. I have tactical initiative. I have three hearts, so I could try and build a thing to come off, but I'm going to pass my initiative just to see if you're going to pay what you're going to pay to do with your guys and then if you don't do anything we're done with that area if you pass right. if you do something uh, i will uh build infrastructure so uh um, look at your hearts my hearts are six you don't have to announce that oh sorry i mean you can you're just yes. giving no no, no right, yeah, yeah, yeah uh I succeed, right, so, so I build it. a thing, and I spend a T. Yep. Okay. So also, I'm not allowed to build infrastructure if there's any of your units not underground in the area. Okay. Um, you being underground means I can do it. You being mm -hmm. overt means I can't. Um, okay. So my turn is... Check how this works now. Um, I think it'll be worth coming out to attempt to tear down your infrastructure, but I don't know how probable it's likely to happen. Player indicate given stack in the area, task point, declare total. So I declare my heart total, plus, uh, plus I get to play a chit to destroy your asset. Um, player compares the total to the sum of the population number in the area. Plus, you can have... So if you have active units, you can have them add their heart value to the defense total to stop me. But because you don't have any not underground units, it's going to be the population number... Um, um, plus one chip draw. 
So if my hearts plus a chit I assign is bigger than four plus a chit draw, I destroy your infrastructure. Okay. Um, I'm try to do that. I think so. Um, Come at me, bro. So I have a total of three. So first I'm going to pay the dollar before I forget. Um, my total is three. Um, I'm going to play a chit for five. So I have a total of eight. The defense value is four plus a chit draw. Four plus two. So six is less than eight. I am successful. So I have destroyed your infrastructure. Um, and you guys disrupted and removed to the common pool. I score four victory points for a UI destroyed. So there's no um, there's no way for me to uh, shore up defense of infrastructure. If you had act units not underground, they okay. would. But underground units mm -hmm. can't do anything because they're too busy hiding. So I really should have a non-underground unit if I am to build infrastructure. Right. Over because, here, it doesn't I mean, really matter. Pop, yeah, like, but Pop 4 yeah. is like one of the, the most yeah. secure places, and Correct. it's still relatively easy. I got easy lucky. To... No, I got, because with the, well, really what it is, I'm not good at hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. Like, destroying your infrastructure. You notice, like, all of my things are one. Mm. So No one likes the government. Yeah. So I do occasionally have a two, but, yeah, if you had had guys active, I would have been attacking you because my total combat value there is six. And I had, you know, a combat shit, I probably could have disrupted you. Yeah, active right. units. So I have to, as an insurgent, I have to um, balance, like, so if I'm underground, uh, I can only do, like, certain things, even though mm -hmm. they may be point generating things. If I'm not underground, you can't build infrastructure. Right. And uh, you, uh, it, it, I, it does defend my infrastructure. Yep. Um but it's one step closer to you being able to turn me over and uh, attack me, right. which I may want if I feel like I'm in a stronger right. position. And then, again, those dummy things determine whether I'm in a stronger position or not. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so it pretty much goes like this until when? So once we are both just, once we've resolved every region, the turn, mm -hmm. we go to the end of turn sequence. Um, it's my turn to take an action again here. I'm going to pass. Mm -hmm. You already did the only thing you could do, so you're done resolving this one. Um, this number. So choose the next area you want to resolve. There's only a couple left. One, two, three regions, it looks like. All right, I will... Uh... Well, you don't go... I go first there. Yes. You just spent a I... dollar. Right, because I haven't actually done that. Because right. uh, if I pull I will, you out, I will resolve that reach. Okay. Because if I pull if you, you pull out, me out, I can't do a thing. No, you can, okay. but it might change what you Correct. want to yeah. do. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's a train modifier three region, which sucks. Cause I actually have four circles there. Like, but the but you have a big advantage being underground. I'm going to spend a dollar to attempt to build infrastructure. I need a one. Like. Not doing anything else with them. It's five. Okay, that was not going to be very no. You're likely. Right. Correct. Uh, uh, I will do the same. All right. I am successful. All right. Uh, this one. Okay. okay. Uh, wait, I uh, oh. I think I pulled it from that one. Let me oh. double check to make sure. No, I, I was right. Okay. I am successful. So, neither of us can do anything in those spaces. Let me see. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so, we have this one and this one and this one left. You know, alternatively, it could be blocks, but it could also be like Maria style or Friedrich style with uh, where you list Little, what your units yeah. are. And then you, you, like you have the yeah, things, but right. you list what your, how many armies yeah. you have in each thing. Uh, 
Sort of, except like no, part it of is harder. The chips it is are harder. different. Yeah, you're right because there's three mm -hmm. there's three numbers. Mm -hmm. So I guess blocks are the best option. A block coin game is actually pretty interesting. Though. So we're doing that one next, you said, or you want to do one? Um, I think. Let me. Let me check what I'm doing over there. Uh, no, I'm good. You have to pick one of the three areas. Oh, I have to. Every area with a unit, at least one unit, must resolve. Okay. You can't not like let me resolve areas that don't. Sure. Have. I just have to. I right. can decide not to do a thing. Right. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. So I'll do that one. Okay. Right. So we're doing this one next. I have three hearts, so I will pay a dollar and attempt to um, so have the initiative. I need to get a two or less to get an infrastructure. I got a four. Yeah, you are bad at infrastructure. Yeah. Typical Correct. government. All right. Do you want to do anything there? No. It's your pass. All right. So that area has been resolved. What's the next one you want to do? Uh, I think there's only one left, right? There's two. There's two, this there's one, that and one and this one. one. Um, yeah, I'll do that one. Okay. You actually have the initiative because we're tied for money, so you get first action. Okay. So, uh, besides building infrastructure, I can shore up. I can uh, improve my insurgency units and they can back any unit except to reduce enemy infrastructure. Cause sabotage or intimidate. Yeah. So I can recruit. But you need, if you look at recruiting, you need an infrastructure to recruit. Okay. So what else can I do besides infrastructure? Underground, if you don't already have infrastructure, you can infrastructure or remove terror. Those are like the only two viable okay. actions that you have there. And there's no terror, so all you're doing is an infrastructure pull. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'll spend the money to... Um, not quite. Let me double check. Uh, not quite. Missed it by that much. Yeah. I'm missing it by like a mile every time. So, okay. I'm going to, um, spend a dollar and I'm going to attempt to recruit militia there instead of because I already have an infrastructure. Let's see how this works. We haven't done that. All right, players may attempt to create new militia units or promote existing ones. Um, so there must be at least one friendly IU in the area, infrastructure, there, and there cannot be terror. So there's no terror, there's friendly infrastructure. Stack composing of only militia units can't do it because they've got the white bar on the heart, but I have a unit, another unit there that doesn't have a Does white bar. Does it list what, uh, what things you can't do unless you have the white bar? So the white bar means you can't do the actions that associate with that stat. It might say on there, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, insurgent only, government only, but that's that's all it says. Yeah, gotcha. Um, in general, it's, you can't, like, a star means you can't attack or ambush if the star is in the white. Because that's the combat action. Unless you have another not, like, combat unit without, basically the white bar is, yeah. yeah. White bar means you can't do it. Um, all right, so the performing player indicate the stack performing the mission. Uh, so white bar, so star is attacking, yep. hearts is infrastructure. And militia and... And the, dots are... The staying the, underground, be me taking you out of the underground and me flipping you over. Okay. Yeah. It's your, the intelligence is what the star mm -hmm. is. Um, okay. So, when to keep the stack forming, so I have a total value of two, which ain't great. Um, you could block me if you had active dudes in the area. So, um, these are normally hidden. So, mm -hmm. is is this information hidden? Yes. I have so to I announce my she... money total each okay. area so you know who's going first. But I don't actually get to know your money total, except that you're higher or lower than me. Okay. Um, so, if you had like a big privacy screen there. Right. Um, 
see here, they compare the total of one chip drawn randomly from the randomizer. Um, so, then the required test point declare the total number of hearts. It's CMR is whatever that stands for, but it's hearts. Um, plus, we're not using assets, so there's no asset bonus. If at large the insurgent player will reveal any units, units in their stacks, you'd have to put things up if you were recruiting and not underground. Um, and we just draw one chip randomly from the pool. And so I do that now? Yeah, so it's if it's well, one, I get it. It is not a one, so I don't get it. Um, and you can attempt to create new militias or prone existing ones. This mission may be attempted in a given area a number of times equal to the population. Um, so unlike the other ones, which take the whole turn, mm -hmm. I can do that twice. Okay. So it's your turn to take an action. Oh, you attempted to do the... No, I haven't done anything. Okay. Oh, yeah, because now I'm just trying to do... So now it's your turn to do it. No, you're right. I did do... I tried to do infra infrastructure oh, yeah. and I failed. Oh, yeah. So I will do spend a dollar for my second attempt to recruit militia... I need a one to be successful. It's a three. So, totally unsuccessful there. Uh, we're done. Yeah, you're pretty in government. Um, Alright, so we have one last area to resolve. I'm at lower, so you have the initiative as far as doing stuff. All right, uh, I uh, choose not to do anything in that region. I will spend a dollar to attempt to recruit militia. I have two hearts, so I need to pull a one. And I only get to do this once. Because the pop is one. One, yeah. and I fail. Okay, so we have resolved all of the areas. Now we can move on to the end phase. So... Enter phase redeployment. Both players may now remove any combat units that aren't militia that are on the map and put them in the available box. So you're setting up to redeploy units. So it's just uh, much like in a in a like a coup or propaganda round, you can redeploy your units essentially. Yeah, you actually have a lot more freedom to do this. Um, other than, you know, militia have to stay where they are. All right. This is harder for me. Oh, wait, I crap. I should not have done that. What? Hold on a sec. I am silly, and I need to undo that a little bit. Um, well, I'm going to, in the meantime, uh, look at my units and see what I might want to redistribute. Probably I want to redistribute mm. hearts to places that don't have infrastructure. Okay. I would imagine these guys you probably don't want to redistribute because if they are all military units, you're going to score that area for being the only okay. player with military. That's why I wanted to put that guy that was there back there because I'm going to score for that. Okay. Um, so, but your underground guys so don't I, count for any of that, so feel free to just... When, so I redeploy after scoring? Right, at the start of the new turn is when we're going to redeploy. Right now you're just picking up the units you want to reposition next turn. Right. Militia must stay where they are. Other units may stay where they are. So the uh, the military units are the ones that I can move. The GR stay. The M. The mills can be moved. Yep. Um, you do so. A bookkeeping thing. All of your face-up units would go face down at this point, mm -hmm. even ones that are staying on yeah. the board. Much like in a propaganda yeah. slash who phase. And they all go to their underground box. You'll be moving them out of the underground box during the new deploy phase. But or that doesn't make sense. All insurgent units and assets remaining on the map return to the underground boxes of their respective areas. Um. Great for adjustment. All right, well, I'll continue to look at my dudes. And uh, I, I essentially just need one. What do I need? What's the minimum I need in order to score in a region? 
So to score for military units, you need to have military be the only player with military units equal to or greater than the population. Okay. But not underground units. Okay. So right now all of them are underground units. So I'm not Actually, gonna... it might hold a sec. So I might be wrong I... about the not underground. Let me double okay. check that. Because that means you're about to get a butt ton of points. Potentially, because you're you're you know yes. your dummies don't count. Um so let me figure that out. Um, let's see. What combat units? Um, yeah, so. Let's see. For now, if they're the only one to have combat units in the area at least equal to the area's terrain modifier. Oh, area's terrain modifier, not population. Sorry. Okay. That is a different number in a lot of places. Yes. Um, so, my right. bad there. Um, so let me keep going. Um, a dispersed mode government combat unit counts as two. Um, only one unit is required for control. And none of your things are dispersed because you haven't flipped them. Right. I only get to flip them at a certain mm -hmm. point. Um, and we're still trying to see if my underground units score at all. Right. Um, LC and scoring is V is VP. It is so yes, it's victory points based on your card. That's the LOC control. All right. Is the victory points you get for controlling the area. And this is how many points I have now. Yes. And we're playing to we would one hundred one hundred points. Okay. Yes. Um. All right, so there is... Yes, it is... So your underground units count. Okay. So let me so, undo... So I need minimum... Uh, so I need military, and by military I mean just military, like white band. It, anything that is not a dummy. Anything that is, is not a dummy. In our okay. game, there's other types of chits. For sure. our game, anything that is not a dummy is a military unit. Okay, so uh, it needs to be greater than the terrain? Equal to or greater Equal than the terrain. Equal to or greater than the terrain, okay. That is good to know. Probably uh, would have been good to know before I put them down, but yeah. that's the way things go. When well, I, I was start. putting mine down under the wrong pretense yeah, yeah, that yeah, I thought yeah, it was population. Yeah. So, like, I thought I was no, going to score it. this, and I'm not so, going to score and it. I can't and move. Uh, I can't move units before scoring. You can remove units, but I can't move. like move. No, yeah. you have to move them during right. the move or deploy them to score during the deploy. All right, so I will move this. Oh, no. And I anything you don't take off, you're not going to get to redeploy next not? turn. Oh, I tried here and I failed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't like where it is, the only way, like... Uh, this is... Yeah. This is... <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll move these two. Um, yeah. uh, I will keep that. I will, I will remove this. Um, and, uh, so when, I guess we'll figure that out when we score. I have a question, but mm -hmm. I think I'm going to answer that when I score. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, so I'll, oh, I haven't successfully done that. Um, and then there, I haven't successfully done that. And then here, I need all of that. So it looks like, looks like I'm set. Mm -hmm. All right. So, victory point adjustment. First off, population control. You have population control in that region. Mm -hmm. So, based on your card, you would either get one, one, or two points, whether it's like the number one, an IU, or the PN. If it's one. One, so you get one point. You have population control here, which will either be one, one, or three. One, if it's one point, one for one IU. I mean, it's population control is the same thing, everything, everywhere, right? Yeah, well, it depends. Like, if it's IUs, you only have one IU, but if you had had two infrastructure, you'd get two points. 
If yours just says a one, then it's just one. Population control VP one. Then you just get one point. Okay. So one point. I have population control here. Mm -hmm. My population control is PN, so I get the population, yeah, population. number of points. So I get yeah. five. Gross. I have population control here, which is two more. And I have population control here for one more. Um, then we do the LOCs. So, do you have one or more military units here? Yes. Then what's your LOC control victory point number? One. Then you get a point. Do you have two or more military units here? Yes. Then you get... Do you have two or more military units there? I believe so. Yes. And this is where, like, I wouldn't know. You would just yeah. do your points on your own. Do you have three or more military units there? Yes. Do you have three or more military units here? Yes. So you get the point there. And I got the point here. I don't right. think I did myself. Right. You get three or more military units here. No. Do you have one or more military unit here? No. Do you have two or more military units here? Yes. So I get a point there. Mm -hmm. Do you have two or more military units here? Was this a military unit? No. No. <clears> then <throat> I get the points for this one because I'm... And this is why the scoring needs to be hidden. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so I just get one point for mine. Okay. So that is... Um, scoring, if one of us had hit 100, we'd be like, Hey, we win! Okay, so is that a turn? No, we have one more thing. Okay. The appeal to the higher authorities. Sure. Um, we can call in central command. This is optional. How this works is if you're calling on higher command, you're going to draw, like you would draw a chit for yourself, mm -hmm. and then I would draw a chit for your higher command. For each, then we compare the numbers starting one at a time. If your circle is higher than their circle, you get a thing. Mm -hmm. If their circle is higher than your circle, you lose a thing. And then we compare stars, and then we compare hearts. So if who if your circle is better you get your max money goes up equal to the difference. Okay. If their circle is bigger, you lose max money equal to the difference. Okay. If your star is better, you get to choose one of the not in play chits and bring it immediately available. All right, if, let's just do it. Yeah. Um, well, it's, you don't have to do it. Yes, but let's mm. let's let's mm. play by let's uh, mm -hmm. learn by example. Mm. So let's, here. let's resolve will, an actual unit and then I will do it. So I call on higher command. Draw a chip for my high command. My draw sucks, so they're gonna kick my ass here. So, circle. It helps if you don't eat candy yeah. <laughs> when explaining this. So, I got a one. Yes. What they have? Uh, for circle two. Yeah. So I lose one max. Okay. I got a two for the star. And you got a three. Um, so if theirs is higher, then I have to remove from the game and add to reserve a combat unit. Um, so. Let me double check whether it has to be a big army or if I can do... No, it has to be a big army unit. Um, yeah. so this is just all kinds of awful. Um, so. so you lose a big army unit. Yep. And then for the heart, I got four. Five. Um, so if I had one, I would get to change my strategy, my point scoring to one of my choice. Mm -hmm. Because they won, 
I add this into my other cards, shuffle, and randomly get a scoring. Okay. So then, oh, and my smallest will change every turn. Only if you call on higher command. Otherwise, none of that happens. Okay. Also, because I called on the high command, the lowest number on the chip was a one, um, which is the minimum number of turns that have to elapse before I can call on them again. It is a not every turn thing. Okay. Control key territory. Now you can choose to call on your high command if you want. Mm, no. After seeing how they raked me over the coals, mm -hmm. that is a whole turn. All right. So that is a turn of combat commander. 